Hello and welcome back to Over 50 and Flourishing. Today I am so thrilled to have a very special guest joining us on the show. Dr. Debbie Silber is the founder of PTB, Post Betrayal Transformation Institute, and she's a holistic psychologist, a health mindset and personal development expert, and a two time number one international best selling author. Her podcast, From Betrayal to Breakthrough, is also globally ranked within the top 1.5% of podcasts. Her recent PhD study on how we experience betrayal made three groundbreaking discoveries that changes how long it takes to heal. In addition to being on Fox, CBS, The Dr. Oz Show, and TEDx and more, she's an award-winning speaker and coach dedicated to helping people move past their betrayals as well as any other blocks preventing them from the health, work, relationships, confidence, and happiness that they most want. Dr. Debbie's groundbreaking research on betrayal and her dedication to helping others heal and thrive is really inspiring. Please welcome Dr. Debbie. You have heard me talk about Bun Charge. It's a holistic wellness brand. They've got a bunch of evidence-based products to really help your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature. Different types of things, blue light reading glasses, infrared saunas, red light therapy, you name it. I like to focus on that red light face mask. I use it and a lot of you are trying these face masks. They help for so many different things like wrinkles and fine lines. It's usually why women our age are drawn to it, but it can help with other issues like eczema, migraines, acne, scar tissue, relaxation, razor burns, even ingrown facial hair. I'm telling you, these red light face masks do so much. Go to bondcharge.com over 50. Use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. There's a company called Ritual, and they know every good skeptic deserves a multivitamin that exceeds your standards. Their science-backed Essential for Women 50 Plus multivitamin has high quality, traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. Hey, no more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 50 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 50 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off. La 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 Lumi. Yes, unlike other deodorants, Lumi whole body deodorant is powered by mandelic acid to deliver crazy 72 hour odor control anywhere and everywhere on your body. Baking soda free, paraben free, pH balanced, so it's safe for below the belt, and a bunch of nice fragrances like clean tangerine, lavender sage, even my favorite, toasted coconut. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with that solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to more than 40% off the starter pack. Use code OVER50 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code OVER50 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Ah, Dr. Debbie Silber. Oh my gosh, what an honor to have you on Over 50 and Flourishing. You are the epitome of that and then some. And I don't think people fully know your story, Debbie. Well, happy to share. First of all, thank you so much. Really looking forward to this conversation. You know, you don't study something like betrayal unless you have to. I'm in business 32 years health, mindset, personal development, psychology. And then I had a really powerful, painful betrayal from my family. I Mm. thought I did everything I needed to do to heal from that. And then it happened a few years later. This time it was my husband. If Mm. anyone has been through that, we know it's devastating, soul crushing. So there wasn't a book on this. There wasn't a program. I didn't know what to do. So I launched myself into a PhD program. (laughs) It was in transpersonal psychology, the psychology of transformation and human potential and got him out of the house. And here I was four kids, six dogs, a thriving business, and now doing a PhD. And while I was there, I did a study 
And I study betrayal. What holds us back? What helps us heal? And what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive? That study led to three groundbreaking discoveries, which changed my health, my family, my work, mm -hmm. my life. And what are those discoveries? Go ahead and elaborate. I'm so curious. Yeah. So the first one was, I had a feeling that betrayal was different than other traumas, death of a loved one, disease, natural disaster, but I didn't want to assume it was the same for everyone else. I'd been through uh, death of a loved one. I'd, I'd been through disease, mm -hmm. but I asked all of them and I said, everyone in my study, if you've been through other traumas, is it different for you unanimously? They said, oh my gosh, it's so different. And here's why. Yes. Because it feels so intentional. You mm -hmm. take it so personally. So the entire self gets shattered, rejection, abandonment, belonging, confidence, worthiness, trust. Like when we lose someone we love, we grieve, we're sad, we mourn the loss. Life will never be the same. We don't necessarily question the whole relationship. We mm -hmm. don't question our ability to trust. We don't question our sanity with betrayal. We do. So that type of trauma and healing needed its own name. So I coined a new term, post-betrayal transformation, the complete and total rebuild of your life and yourself. What is it about betrayal? I mean, I, you know, I've been betrayed, we all have, and you're right, it is such a different emotion than losing a parent. I mean, I lost my mother last year, and yes, that is a brutal, grueling pain to have to deal with, but there is something about somebody doing something to you that is the absence of truth. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know how to, to summarize it. You probably can better than I, but there is this raw sort of ripping that takes place where you just can't believe somebody would, would do something to you in such a way, whatever that way is. You know, people always think betrayal as cheating, but there are so many other forms of it as well. So many other forms, you know, think about it. This was the person or these were the people who gave you a sense of safety and security. Mm -hmm. So when this is the person where these are, are the people to shatter that very sense of safety and security, it's traumatizing. When the people we trust the most prove untrustworthy, who do we trust? Like these right. are the ones, these are the people we run to when other people are causing harm, when they're the ones causing the harm, where do we go? So it is entirely uh, unsettling and think about it. I mean, other people can betray us as well, but these are the people we thought we knew the most. We were the closest to, and it's as if they take a mask off mm -hmm. showing you who they really are or, or who they've temporarily become. So it's very, it's, it's shattering for sure. The good news yeah. is you can heal from all of it. Right. But, but you can't, prevent it from happening. There, there are no prevent. I mean, I, unless there's something I don't know, but I'm, I'm yet to be aware of any preventative steps I can take from not being betrayed again, aside from uh, living isolated. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you there actually a repeat betrayal is a sign of an unhealed betrayal. The face has changed, but it's the same thing. So we mm -hmm. keep going from boss to boss to boss, friend to friend to friend, partner to partner to partner. And we say, is it me? Yes, it is. Not in that it's your fault and that it's your opportunity. There's a profound mm -hmm. lesson waiting to be learned. You are lovable, worthy, and deserving. You need better boundaries in place, whatever that is. Until and unless you get that, you're gonna have opportunities that look like people to teach you. So, those re so we see it, for example, every single day, uh, people come into the PBT Institute with, you know, they've obviously been betrayed, and we see it in health, in work, in relationships. Like for example, in relationships, I'll see it in one of two ways, a repeat betrayal. Like I said, the faces change where it's the same thing and it's the same thing, or the big wall goes up. That's the other. You mm -hmm. say, oh no, 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 I've been that. There's no way I'm taking a chance like that again. We think it's coming from strength and it's not, it's coming from fear. Our yes. heart was so broken. We're unwilling to be that vulnerable. So we'd rather keep everyone at a distance then risk that again. But how can we approach things smartly? Because you can't, you can't live isolated. We're not designed to be that way and we're doing ourselves a disservice. So how can we open ourselves up smartly, like you say? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what the third discovery was all about. You mm-hmm. you move through the proven predictable five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. Happy to share what those five yes, stages are. Yes, please do. Yeah. So, and I, I definitely want to get to the second discovery as well. Uh, but the third one, for me, this was the most exciting. And what we learned was while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and so many people do, if we're going to fully heal, fully heal physically, mentally, and emotionally, we're going to move through five proven predictable stages. And what's even more exciting about that is we know what happens physically, mentally, and emotionally at every stage. And we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next. Healing is entirely predictable. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, out of the five stages, most people stop in stage three. When I go through the stages, you'll know exactly what stage you're in, or you will remember your journey through all of them. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Stage one. (laughs) Okay. So stage one is actually before it happens. And if you can imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, what I saw with everybody, me too, was this heavy lean on the physical and the mental thinking and doing. We're so good at that and kind of neglecting or ignoring the emotional and the spiritual feeling and being. Yep. Well, if a table only has two legs, it's easy for that table to topple over. That's us. Stage two, shock, trauma, D-Day, discovery day. Everyone remembers their D-Day. And this is the breakdown of the body, the mind, and the worldview. This is the scariest out of all of the stages. And what happens is right here, You've gotten the news that forever changes your life. You've created a psychological earthquake. Life is now compartmentalized into two camps, before it happened and after it happened. And what happens is we ignite the stress response. So now we're headed for every single stress-related symptom, illness, condition, disease. Our mind is in a complete state of chaos and overwhelm. We cannot wrap our mind around what we just learned. Mm -hmm. And our worldview has just been shattered. Our worldview is our mental model, the rules that govern us. Trust this person. Don't go there. These are the rules. And in one earth shattering moment or series of moments, every rule you've been holding to be real and true is no longer. The bottom has bottomed out on you Mm -hmm. and a new bottom hasn't been formed yet. It's terrifying. Think about it. If the bottom were to bottom out on you, what would you do? You'd grab hold of anything or anyone in order to stay safe and stay alive. And that's stage three, survival instincts emerge. This is the most practical out of all of the stages. If you can't help me, get out of my way. How do I survive this experience? Where do I go? Who can I trust? How do I feed my kids? Here's the trap though, stage three, and you know so many people in this stage, stage three by far is the most common place we get stuck. And that's why. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yes, and I I know many people who are stuck in that, yes. And you will hear right now, you will hear exactly why. Once we figured out how to survive our experience, because Mm -hmm. it feels so much better than the shock and trauma of where we just came from, we think it's good. We're like, okay. And because we don't know there's anywhere else to go, we don't know there's a stage four or stage Mm -hmm. five. Transformation doesn't even begin until stage four. But because we don't know there's anywhere else to go, we plant roots here. We park here. We're not supposed Mm -hmm. to, but we do. And then four things start to happen. See if you can think of anybody as I say each of these. The first one is we start getting these small self benefits. We get our story, right? We like our story. We get to be right. We get someone to blame. We Mm -hmm. get sympathy from everyone we tell our story to. And on some level, we're really not getting much else. So we take it. And so we plant deeper roots. Hmm. Now, because we're here longer than we should be, now the mind starts doing things like, you know, maybe you're not that great. Maybe you deserved it. Maybe this, maybe mm-hmm. that. So we plant deeper roots. Again, we're not supposed to, but we don't know. Now, because we're here longer than we should be, and these are the thoughts we're thinking, well, this is the energy we put out. Mm-hmm. Like energy attracts like energy. Right. So now we start attracting people and circumstances and relationships towards us to confirm, yep, this is this is where you belong. Here's where we join that lame support group and you will actually sabotage your healing because you found your people and you don't want to outgrow them. Mm. This is where you're healing and you will sabotage your healing because you're afraid to outgrow your betrayer who's not changing. Does that make sense? Total sense. Total sense. Yeah, it gets even worse, but I'll get you out of here. 
because it feels so bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we don't know there's anywhere else to go. Right here, we mm -hmm. start numbing, avoiding, distracting mm -hmm. because we're miserable. So we start mm -hmm. using food, drugs, alcohol, alcohol. work, TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. think about it. We do it for a day, a week, a month. Now it's a habit, a year, 10 years, 20 years. I can mm -hmm. see someone 20 years later and say, yes. that drinking you're doing, mm -hmm. that emotional eating, do you think that has anything to do with your betrayal? And they would look at me like I'm crazy. And they mm -hmm. would say, it happened 20 years ago. Doesn't matter. All they did was put themselves in stage three and stay there. Does that make sense? Wow. Yes, it makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. And we'll talk, we're going to take a quick break, um, Debbie, because I'm so curious. Clearly, we get stuck in stage three for a reason, but there's got to be a way to get from three to four. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so curious, and I know our audience is going to be so curious to hear how that happens, because it's obviously a critical step to make in order for us to break three free and to be able to move forward and move past that betrayal. You are listening and watching to Dr. Debbie Silver. Fascinating, fascinating conversation. We are talking about betrayal. She has PBT, Post Betrayal Transformation Institute, a podcast, books, on and on. We're, we're going to tout all your, your successes, your accolades, your benefits, and your story because it's impressive and you're here to help us all get through betrayal. We'll be back right after this. You have heard me talk about Bun Charge. It's a holistic wellness brand. They've got a bunch of evidence-based products to really help your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature. Different types of things, blue light reading glasses, infrared saunas, red light therapy, you name it. I like to focus on that red light face mask. I use it and a lot of you are trying these face masks. They help for so many different things like wrinkles and fine lines. It's usually why women our age are drawn to it, but it can help with other issues like eczema, migraines, acne, scar tissue, tissue, relaxation, razor burns, even ingrown facial hair. I'm telling you, these red light face masks do so much. No EMF radiation, no flicker. It's sleek and lightweight with a one-year warranty. How do you say no to that? Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50. Use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. My job as a journalist makes me a bit of a skeptic, but you know, that's a good thing. Sometimes you need to sort of have a, I don't know if this really works. Is it gonna help me? Is it gonna save me time and money? I think that approach is really good to have for your health and wellness. There's a company called Ritual, and they know every good skeptic deserves a multivitamin that exceeds your standards. Their science-backed Essential for Women 50 Plus multivitamin has high quality, traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. Why do I like Ritual? It makes it so simple. I'm getting up at 4.20 in the morning. Do I need to figure out five, six, seven vitamins to take? No, I need a multivitamin for women 50 plus that has everything I need, eight key nutrients in two delayed release capsules per day. That's it, it makes it so simple. Hey, no more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 50 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 50 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Debbie Silver. We are talking about betrayal. We are learning that there are steps that we have to move through in order to get through this and to get out on the other side. If we have been betrayed in our life, whether it has happened recently or in many, many years past, because clearly as we're hearing, Debbie, we can carry the hurt from that betrayal with us and really get stuck. So you were talking about these phases. Before the break, we were in phase three. You said that's a place where a lot of people land and plant roots, but it's not where they're supposed to stay. So let's get back to that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So stage three truly is like quicksand. And mm -hmm. the longer you're there, the more that space becomes your identity. And we don't want to be without an identity. So if we can't even imagine anything other than what we have, what happens is the longer we're there, the more symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional we have, the worse we feel. So now we're spending time suppressing and medicating symptoms, not feeling well physically, mentally, and emotionally, not being people with people who lift and inspire and move us forward. And it's a really bad trap. The good news is we can move to stage four. 
Stage four is all about finding and adjusting to a new normal. And in order to leave stage three, we grieve, we mourn the loss. I mean, there are a bunch Mm -hmm. of things we need to do, but we're finding and adjusting to a new normal here. And, And I use this analogy of if you've ever moved, if you've ever moved to a new house, office, condo, apartment, whatever, all your stuff's not there. It's not quite cozy yet, but you're like, okay, we got this. We got this. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that. But what's so interesting is think about it. If you were to move, you don't necessarily take everything with you. You don't take the things that don't represent the version of you that you want to be in this new space. And what I found was if your friends weren't there for you, you don't take them with you. That Mm -hmm. lame support group that was holding you back, you're done. The betrayer that you were trying to work things through and they have no intention of changing, you're done. And Mm -hmm. stage four is very forward moving. It's, it's all about, uh, it's very action oriented, but action oriented around who do I want to be now? It's very intentional. It's very deliberate. When we've settled into this new space, we've made it mentally cozy and home, we move into the fifth most beautiful stage. And this is Mm -hmm. healing, rebirth, and a new worldview. Your Mm -hmm. body starts to heal. Self-love, self-care, eating well, exercise. We didn't have the bandwidth for that earlier. Now we do. The mind is healing. You're making all kinds of new rules, new boundaries Mm -hmm. based on the road you just traveled. And we have a new worldview based on everything we see so clearly now. And the four legs of the table, in the beginning, it was all about physical and mental. By this point, we're solidly grounded because we're focused on the emotional and the spiritual too. Those are the five stages. Yeah, it, it's incredible. I, and I know so many people who get stuck in stage three and it's under it's understandable. There's a lot of mourning and a lot of anger. And tell me, tell me this, you know, how do you you hear people all the time who've been through betrayal and they constantly bring it up and they constantly talk about it. And it's, it's become their, their narrative and to a point, almost a broken record. And you're thinking, well, my gosh, you know, I I understand that it hurt you. I understand the pain. I understand the devastation, but at some point, don't you just have to let go of that story and stop putting it on repeat? Yeah. You know, it's, that's one of, if you could imagine, imagine, a. uh, someone holding on to two trapeze bars. One is stage three, one is stage four. You're not going anywhere until you let go of one bar in order to swing Mm -hmm. to the other. And that's what's so common. If I tell you how many people come into the PBT Institute with therapy trauma, and these are the most well-meaning therapists, but what's happening is to your point, you're unpacking, you're unloading, you're feeling heard and validated and understood, but nothing, if anything glues you to stage three, it's only doing that without a strategic plan to move forward. That's one of the classic reasons why people get stuck in stage three. Between the support group they're in, between the people they're speaking with, it keeps them stuck. And then, you know, also to your point, well-meaning friends, they get tired of hearing that story if it's falling on deaf ears. Yeah. It sounds like there is a lot of hard work that has to happen in stage three to be able to get you to the other side. Sounds like it's a mind shift. What are some of the things that you teach those practical steps to help people get out of that rut? Yeah. You know, the, the sort of trajectory as you're moving through betrayal, you go from this extreme sadness. Oh my gosh, how could you do this Mm -hmm. to anger? How could you do this to me? Mm -hmm. And then there's this sort of pity. And that's actually a good thing where it's like, really, that's what you do. And that's so, that's so great when you get to that point, because it's almost as if you were in the painting, the picture, you didn't even know you were there and you've removed yourself in order to look at it clearly. It's a really strong spot. And if you, and, and then from there it's compassion, then you're good. But in order to move through all of those different emotions Uh, It's Mm -hmm. because you are moving through each stage. You're making sense and then you're making meaning out of it. Now, when I say something like making meaning out of something too soon, there's too much anger. You're not ready. That's Mm -hmm. why certain things have to happen at certain stages in order for you to fully and completely be able to leave it behind. But mindset is huge. It's a huge thing because even just one of those aspects of it, we take it so personally. We have to learn even though it happened to you, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. And what's just that is a hard one. 
Yes, it is. And and it also is critical to not accept any blame for the narrative. Um, I'm so curious in the end, is the goal, the ultimate goal, is it forgiveness? Forgiveness has such a huge place in all of this. And it, mm. it, it has such a huge place because it has nothing to do with the other person. Right. Forgiveness releases the power that pain has over you. Now, mm-hmm. rebuilding and reconciliation, that's an entirely different thing. That has so much to do with the other person as well. Right. But forgiveness is, you know, I originally thought it was going to be sort of a one and done. Like, ta-da, I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, It doesn't work like that. It yeah. happens in stages. It happens. It takes time. And the reason why it takes time is because when we forgive too soon, it backfires when it's for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. So many people, they're like, this is just too uncomfortable. I just want this over with already. Fine, I forgive you. They don't feel safe. They don't mm-hmm. feel valued. They just want to get out of this uncomfortable spot. That doesn't work. There was even a study I remember reading when I was doing mine, and it was about forgiveness. And it said, if you feel safe and valued and you forgive, you feel better. If you do not feel safe and valued and you forgive, you feel worse. And when I wrote trust again, I upped it a notch. And I said, you know, let's exchange the word forgiveness because I I believe we should forgive anyway for our own health and healing. Exchange it for rebuild. And what that would look like would mean it would be if you feel safe and valued and you rebuild with that person, you feel better. If you do not feel safe and valued and you rebuild with that person, you feel worse. Interesting. You know, and some people say, I, I can never forgive them. I can never forgive what he or she did. And I think I'm so glad you, you reframed forgiveness as something that you offer yourself. I don't think forgiving means that we have to reestablish a relationship or have them back in our lives, right? I mean, some people think, well, forgiving means, oh, okay, I accept it. And, you know, we can communicate again. That may not be the case. I'll tell you, th- forgiveness for me, and I was in the ICU for 11 days. I've lost loved ones. Nothing for me personally was as hard as forgiving in the way in the way that it happened. Now, rebuilding is always a choice, whether you rebuild yourself and move on. That's what I did with my family. It wasn't an option to rebuild with them. Or if the situation lends itself, if you're willing, if you want to, you rebuild something from the ground up new with the person who hurt you. And that's what I did with my husband. So not long ago, as to completely transform people, we married each other again. New wow. rings, new vows, new dress, and our four kids is our bridal party. Never in a mm. billion years would I have done that if if I wasn't totally different. And for sure, uh, if, if he wasn't. People are so afraid of the complete and total crash and burn and, and death of the old. That's the only way you birth the new. Mm. And what I see so often is because of that fear or so many other reasons, people just try to patch it up, patch it up, patch it up. And I'll tell you, there were three groups in the study who didn't heal. Uh, one was the group, they had their story, they were sticking with it. That was mm. it. They had their their story. Um, they didn't heal. The second group, this was the group that was numbing, avoiding, distracting. They ran to the doctor who put them on a mood stabilizer, anti-anxiety medication. They started drinking, emotionally eating. They didn't heal. It may have made the day a bit easier to get through. Not mm-hmm. without a price. The third group, though, this was the group where the betrayer had very little consequences. So whether it was out of fear of change, financial fear, religious reasons, that was a big one. Not wanting mm-hmm. to break up a family, whatever it was. This was the group who just tried to turn the other cheek, look the other way. I saw mm-hmm. two things with this group. Number one a further deterioration of the relationship. And two, this group was by far the most physically sick. Mm. Your broken heart. Yep, because you're having, you're not having, you're choosing to live with it and not process the emotionality of that. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. So interesting. Are you, um, I'm sure you've shared your story many a time, but you've given us just, you know, a glimpse into your personal life and what you went through with, with your husband, with your family. Um, you know, people always feel a great sense of connection with others when they can identify and find themselves in other people's stories. So if you wouldn't mind sharing yours with my audience, I know they would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, it was, uh, my husband and I have been together since 1984. That is a long time. Long time. And for the first 20 years, it was, you know, it was, it was good. And 
like I said, I had four kids and six dogs and I was in way over my head. He yeah. was doing really well in his, in his work. And we just started drifting apart. And, and then uh, I got that phone call. You just never want to get. And I just crashed. I just absolutely mm -hmm. crashed, but there's not a cell in me that thinks betrayal is okay. I mean, I'm a highly sensitive empath with mm -hmm. integrity as my most, as my highest value. Mm -hmm. So that was a deal breaker. And I was like, okay, that's it. I wasn't counting on this. I didn't want this, but got him out of the house. And it was really important for me that I, it just was really all about the kids. It was like mm -hmm. kids, clients, crash, kids, clients, crash. I mean, that's all that happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what was so beautiful was each of the, he actually told the kids. And I think that's one of the reasons why he transformed to the level that he did. If, if mm -hmm. you're going to, nothing is going to wake you up like losing the only people in your life that matter. And he lost that's right. all of us. Mm -hmm. And they were, it was team mom. Uh, and uh, what was so interesting was how they were processing this. Of course, it's like, I didn't want to burden them with helping me heal, but I knew they're so perceptive, especially my girls. I have two girls, two boys, uh, and they, you know, you don't even have to speak. They, they know what, they know what I'm going through. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I just remember telling them, um, you're seeing me crash, but don't you worry. You're going to see me rise. I have no idea how this is going to happen, but don't you worry. And when I joined that PhD program, selfishly, it was really only so that I can heal and be a better mom for my kids. Right. Um, but I remember going through it saying, I have no idea how I'm going to heal from, from this. But if I do, I'm taking everybody with me. It was just mm. a knowing. Wow. What happens if the betrayer or somebody who betrays isn't honest with the family about what took place out of fear, pride, yeah. ego, and, you know, how is that handled? It's so common. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. the way I see it so often handled is the betrayed takes the heat for mm -hmm. the betrayer. They mm -hmm. protect them at their own expense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody loves the betrayer. So, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I'll just deal, suffer and struggle in silence. That's where all the symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome, we haven't gotten to that yet. I want to make sure I mm -hmm. do the second discovery. Yes. That's where all those symptoms come from. But mm -hmm. it's not fair. It's, it's, it's not fair to the betrayed. And it's certainly, it's not even fair to the betrayer because unless, unless both of them have an opportunity and we have a program for the betrayer in the community. So I see this all the time with them as well, unless mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to crash and burn, they don't learn either. Now there are yeah. some betrayers onto the next, you know, they don't even, I'm not even talking about them, but there are betrayers who realize I just shattered the heart, the trust, the love of the very person who loves me the most. And I love them. I love the most. I want to become someone I'm proud of. I'm disgusted with my own, my old self. That person transforms and has the potential to transform just as much as the betrayed. I see it every day. Are some betrayers just simply not aware of their role or what they did? I mean, are some just in such denial that they can't even own it or acknowledge it? You know, so it could be anything from a sense of entitlement to such deep shame to mm -hmm. no empathy. Mm -hmm. There, It could be unhealed trauma. There are always, you know, we can, we can pinpoint it to so many things that does not give anyone an excuse, but there are so many reasons, but the ones who aren't even willing to acknowledge what they've done, you have very little to work with here. Actually, there's something we teach. I would love to share this with, okay. with your audience. I think they'd get so much out of it. I call it the window of willingness. This mm -hmm. is how you know if it's safe and in your best interest to heal and rebuild with someone or to move along. Would that be mm -hmm. helpful if I shared that? Absolutely. Please do. Okay. So imagine level one, where the window is the widest open, representing the greatest opportunity to heal and rebuild with someone. And when the window is the widest open and you're at that level one, it looks like this, full, complete responsibility. That person is, own, they own it. 
They mm. take 100% responsibility. They are, uh, they, there's regret, there's remorse. Uh, and it sounds something like this. I am so sorry for what I did. What in the world can I do to make it up to you? Now, mm. of course, it's going to take a lot more than that, but you're off to a good start. Right. You have something to work with. You can feel the window closing with this level two, and you know it's coming when you hear the word because. Well, I did it because I had the justification because <laughs> an excuse. They're making yeah. an excuse. So there's still something to work with. But if you felt it, it didn't feel as good as mm -hmm. that complete and total responsibility. Mm -hmm. Still something to work with if you choose. Doesn't feel as good. You can feel the window closing with level three and you know it's coming when you hear the word you. Well, I did it because you, I said it because you, I call this one the two-sided slap. Here you get betrayed and then you uh -huh. get blamed for it. This right. is crazy making. And the biggest problem I see is when people believe this, but think about it. Many relationships work when you believe it. This person has convinced you that you're the crazy one. And then we're thinking, well, it must, maybe it is me. Maybe mm -hmm. if I just, you know, communicated better, maybe if I was thinner, younger, prettier, maybe, maybe. And level three is close cousins with level four. Level four, mm -hmm. the window was completely sealed shut. And here's where someone is taking no responsibility. And it sounds something like this. I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. You really mm -hmm. need some help. You have nothing right. to work with. Right? right. When it's a level three, level four, you heal yourself and move along. At this mm -hmm. point in their current level of consciousness, this is what you're getting. So here's where, here's where we make ourselves sick, trying mm -hmm. to convince, trying to, you know, persuade someone. Here's where we heal ourselves and move along. Level one and two, you have something to work with if you choose. Fascinating. Oh my gosh, this is such good information. You're listening to Dr. Debbie Silver. We are talking about betrayal, clearly, and how to navigate through it. She's been elaborating on her steps, which are, are so intent and thought-driven and research-based on top of it. Um, I'm, I, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break, Debbie, and just thank our sponsors. But what I want to talk to you about on the backside is you just li listed all those steps to make the window close where it is so clear and evident what needs to be done. And I find so many women still choose not to move because of fear of the unknown. And so let's tackle that when we come right back. La 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 Lumi. Yes, unlike other deodorants, Lumi whole body deodorant is powered by mandelic acid to deliver crazy 72 hour odor control anywhere and everywhere on your body. Let me tell you, my hours here at Merritt Street have gotten really long and I'm sorry, but I'm a little self-conscious. I want to make sure that I'm smelling good all the time. I personally love those Lumi body wipes. They come in a nice little pack. I keep them stored here in my dressing room and just anytime I'm concerned, I can always go in and use a little body wipe and I just, I feel great. Baking soda free, paraben free, pH balanced, so it's safe for below the belt and a bunch of nice fragrances like clean tangerine, lavender sage, even my favorite, toasted coconut. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with that solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes and free shipping. And as a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to more than 40% off the starter pack. Use code OVER50 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code OVER50 at L-U-M-E D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. There is nothing like feeling confident in your own skin and having great skin really helps to boost that confidence. So many skincare companies and lines out there and a lot of times these lines have so many different products that you have to use, all these multiple step products and it's complicated and expensive. Let's talk about One Skin. Boy, it is just a simple, scientifically validated solution company to really help your skin. And their secret is One Skin's proprietary OS1 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skins. And they've got several studies to back that up. 
I've been using the OS One I and OS One Face for a while now, and I love it. They also come in these great travel size companions, so they go through the TSA security, and again, one bottle for the face and one for the eye, and I don't have to worry about layering and too many products. So easy. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code OVER50 at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code OVER50. After your purchase, the last where you heard about them, please support our show and tell them we sent you. Welcome back, everybody. My guest today is Dr. Debbie Silber. We are talking about betrayal. It is something that we all have been through at any phase or stage of our lives. It could be betrayal from childhood. It could be betrayal in current relationships. It doesn't matter. And as Debbie was pointing out earlier in this conversation, a lot of that betrayal from early on can linger with us if unresolved. And so earlier, she kind of took us through the steps on working through all of that. But before the break, we were talking about really more specific, it sounded like relationships, really, Debbie, of, of marriage or you know, a, an intimate relationship where there was betrayal and sort of that window closing. And what I had mentioned prior to the break was so many women realize that they are where they are, but yet they stay because they're afraid of where they might go and what that looks like. And that that is so sad to me and breaks my heart because you are living with that in that life and nobody's nobody's making an effort to change or acknowledge. Exactly. And that's why repeat betrayals happen because mm -hmm. if nothing changes, nothing changes. And right. what happens on top of that is they're so uh, stuck and sad and then they make themselves sick and it's mm -hmm. this downward spiral. And the, the, the more they're there, the less they feel I can't get out of this. And that's why I always recommend what people say to me all the time. What do I do? Do I say, do I go? And I always say, get yourself to stage five, because if you're in stage three, you're going to make stage three decisions. If you're in stage four, you're going to make stage four decisions. If you're in stage five, you're going to make stage five decisions. I'm going to show you something with my hands. You will never forget this. Ready? Okay. So yep. here's what happens after betrayal. We're together. And then all of a sudden there's betrayal. We're so miserable. Mm -hmm. We're so sad. We're so hurt. So we just want this pain to go away and we just keep going back. And this is what many people do for life. Right? right. So what I recommend is don't do this. All you want to do is do this. Now, if you're so intent on being with this person, you're going to mm -hmm. do this, but then you will keep sabotaging yourself because you don't want to outgrow that person. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to realize, well, I like it up here. Why don't they do this? Well, they're not mm -hmm. ready, able, whatever. So if you're doing this and they're stuck here, eventually what happens is you get this. So I always mm. recommend you do the work to get here on their own. They may say, I better step up my game to meet the strength of this woman. They do mm -hmm. this. And now here's a 2.0 relationship. Do you see? Mm -hmm. But what most people do, they do this. That's they the stay. They stay down below. Right. And I think, too, that that fear of rising and not being met. And again, it's all rooted in fear. Everything we're talking about is fear based. It's the most paralyzing emotion there is. Absolutely. Because we can't predict what's going to be there. It's like, I, I just love analogies. I'm going to give you another one. Imagine here you are, you're, 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 there's a lake and you swim halfway and then you keep swimming back. Now, if you were to keep going the same distance, there's this beautiful island with everything that you want, but mm -hmm. you go halfway and you're like, oh, this is really hard. And then you go back and you go halfway and you go back. And it's imagine if you, instead of just going back, if you just went the same distance and you continued, you get to a very new and different place. But the fear of the unknown mm -hmm. is what's keeping people constantly yep. going back, and going the back, same, even if it stinks, it's what we yep. know. 100%. I'm going to, so using your analogy, right? You, you want to get up here. What are your tangible steps to get up here? And I'm sure faith plays a real big role in being able to rise up higher. Yeah, it absolutely does. It's interesting you say that because spirituality 
played such a role in healing. And I was curious about mm -hmm. that because yeah. um, I saw it with everybody, me too. And what I saw was whether it was the spiritual side of your religion, some people abandoned religion completely. They felt it didn't support them. So they just moved towards spirituality. Some people weren't doing anything and became spiritual. And I was curious about that. And I said, well, why, mm -hmm. why would that be? And what, what happened was the reason was two reasons. One, we want to feel a sense of connection. We've, it's like we've been unplugged. We feel so, we feel like the, the bottom has bottomed out. We feel so ungrounded that we mm -hmm. move towards anything that gives us this feeling of being grounded. And the second one was when trust is shattered, we don't trust the person we trusted the most. The next level of that is, well, then I don't trust myself. How did I not see? How did I not know? So then it's, well, if I don't trust the person I trusted the most and I can't trust myself, how do I trust in anything or anyone? So mm -hmm. trusting in something bigger or other uh, was something that we could grab. Interesting. And, you know, here's the other thing, too. I think sometimes in rising above and realizing you've got to take steps and you're, you may have to make changes in your life, then comes this interesting conundrum because, and I've heard this being said many a time, well, if I make this move and I do this, I feel like I'm betraying my family. So now the person who's been betrayed suddenly feels this guilt of being a betrayer. And that's a really bizarre cycle. It, it's so it's so interesting that you brought that up because that's self betrayal and it's so true. But I want everybody to think about this: if the only way something is working is if you're compromising your heart, your values, your integrity, your morality, whatever it is, if that's what working looks like for you, play that out. We don't want to do that, but play that out five to ten years. How does that look? How does that feel? Mm -hmm that it builds resentment. It's, it's going to make us sick. Mm -hmm. And that's where, and of course we, especially if we're people pleasers, we want everybody around us happy, but yep. it's there. What happens after betrayal is it is so, and I see it in stages four and stage five, we are intentionally and deliberately creating a new version of ourselves. That's why people in stage five, they're unrecognizable because <laughs> they're looking at all of it. Every time a thought comes in, a belief comes in, an opportunity, if the old version of them, you know, they can, they can say, okay, well, does the old version of me did it? Does that still work mm -hmm. for me? No, nope. then forget it. I'm yeah. not bringing that. We take all the parts we love. We leave behind everything that no longer serves. Interesting. And, you know, I think the two that obviously has to apply professionally, we've been talking about relationship betrayals, but a lot of people get betrayed in the workplace or get betrayed, you know, in different ways where maybe they lost a job or lost an opportunity because of something said, something done, policy change, you know, whatever that may be. Um, how do you handle those types of betrayals that may force you to take a big pivot in your life? You know, and this I've seen this seen this so many times where if we don't make a move, the universe will make one for us or will help right. us. <laughs> make yes, that it will. Move. And and so so often something like that comes up. This just happened the other day. Someone brought a, a situation very similar. And mm -hmm. um there was her coworker took credit for her idea. And that's a betrayal. And so we played it out thinking, okay, well, what's what's the best outcome? Do you want to speak to your coworker? Do you want to speak to your boss? Like what? works best. And neither of those felt like a really good option. So then I asked her, do you love your job? I can't stand my job. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you, what's going on with that? What do you like? I always wanted to start my own business. And all of a sudden she starts lighting up about mm -hmm. this business idea. And I said, you know, it's so interesting. Would you ever consider making that leap? I don't know. It's so scary. <laughs> you know, the thought of it. And I was like, well, you know, if you look at it like that, your coworker is kind of a little angel, isn't she? Because mm -hmm. you wouldn't have even thought to make that move if she didn't annoy you to the level that she did. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I truly believe God uses people in situations in our lives to catapult yeah. us and force us to look at things, to honor those seeds that were planted, but we haven't watered out of fear or not knowing or not sure, you know, all of that. I mean, these are situational things that are not accidents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it all the time. So when we look and we say, what could be uh, the benefit mm -hmm. of this? And people look at me like I'm crazy. But if you're right. willing to take a look, 
right? Like, look, you, you, you know what anybody betrayed, or even just look at my story. I had a very powerful story. Everybody in my life that I truly trusted all betrayed me. And I would get sympathy if I told you my story, but look at the opportunity to have such a better story now and how mm -hmm. many people we can help because of it. So we choose what we want to do with that story. And, yes. and I recommend creating a much better one. Yeah. Creating your own narrative. Let's talk about family betrayal, man. That's brutal. I mean, that's your, that's your foundation on which your life was built, right? It's not people you picked to bring into your life. These people are your life. Um, yeah. It carries such gravity. So walk us through that. Sure. It absolutely does. Because think about it. Uh, let's say a child who's completely dependent on their parent and the parent does something awful, mm -hmm. right? That's going to have a different impact than your best friend sharing your secret. Yes. But these are the people who are teaching us how to, how to act, how to behave, what's right and wrong, who to trust, what to do. So what happens is we, it's so easy when we have scenarios like that to move into relationships later on, not that they're good. They're so familiar. We know mm -hmm. how to do this. We know how it yeah. works. And that's where we see so many symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome. And I would love to share with you what mm -hmm. that's about. Okay. Yes. Uh, because so many people struggle. This is, this was the second discovery. And what we, what we learned was there's actually a collection of symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional, so common to betrayal. It's now known as post-betrayal syndrome. And um, we've all been taught time heals all wounds. I have the proof that when it comes to betrayal, that's not true. Mm -hmm. We can't count on time. We can't yep. count on a new relationship to heal it. Because there's a, there's a um, question on the assessment that says, is there anything else you'd like to share? And people write things like, my betrayal happened 35 years ago. I'm unwilling to trust. My betrayal mm -hmm. happened 15 years ago. It feels like it happened yesterday. So we know healing needs to be intentional and deliberate. But every few months I pull stats from the quiz. I I'm happy to share them if you want to hear some of them. Yes, please. Sure. So, cause that would be really awkward if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> and you knew I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is based on imagine 95,000 plus people. So okay. men, women, just about every country is represented. 78% constantly revisit their experience. 81% feel a loss of personal power. 94% uh, deal with painful triggers. And if you've ever had a trigger, they're brutal. They're brutal. The most common physical symptoms, 71% have low energy, 68% have sleep issues, 63% have extreme fatigue. You wake up, you're exhausted, your adrenals have mm -hmm. tanked. 47% have weight changes. So in the beginning, you can't hold food down. Later on, you may be emotionally eating, using food mm -hmm. for comfort. 45% have a digestive issue. So that could be anything, Crohn's, IBS, diverticulitis, constipation, diarrhea. Uh, the most common mental symptoms, 78% are overwhelmed, 68% are unable to focus, 62% uh, can't concentrate. So just imagine that you can't concentrate, you're exhausted, you have a gut issue, you mm -hmm. have to work, you have to raise your kids. Right. That's not even the emotional issues. Emotionally, 88% experience extreme sadness, 83% are very angry, real common to bounce back and forth between those two all day long. 79% mm -hmm. are stressed. Just a few more. Here's why I wrote the book. Trust again, 84, this one killed me. 84% have an inability to trust. Yeah. 67% prevent themselves from forming deep relationships because they're afraid of being hurt again. 82% find it hard to move forward. 90% want to move forward, but they don't know how. Mm. Profound. Staggering. It is staggering. It absolutely debilitates you and prevents you from living a life by not being able to move through it. It, it is unbelievable. I'm so curious. I mean, not that it really matters, but did the research show, do betrayers tend to be more female, more male, or is it equally? It's, it's mixed. What mm -hmm. I found though is, oh, and then just to wrap up with the, um, with the symptoms, those symptoms, first mm -hmm. of all, you didn't hear me say 20, 30%, they're super high. They're also not necessarily from a recent betrayal. This yes. could be from the parent who did something awful when you were a kid or the girlfriend yep. or boyfriend who broke your heart in high school. So think yep. about this. That person may not know, care, remember. They may not even be alive. Mm. And here we are. 
walking around with these symptoms because of something that happened all that time ago, because we're stuck in stage three. The good wow. news is they all start healing in stages four and five. Amazing. But you know, sometimes, and I, I would guess too, I mean, if this is a past childhood trauma, a lot of this would need to be remedied in some type of a therapy situation to be able to deal with it. Because oftentimes we don't even know the origins or the roots of these things until we start getting in there and talking about stuff that we have probably deeply repressed and hidden and buried just to be able to function in life. And, and you can't heal and you can't grow unless you really know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a combination. The reason why so many people stay stuck is because they're only addressing it from a mental and emotional level. Mm -hmm. One of the, the most important aspects of this, along with the others, is the, the physical le level that has to be addressed, the somatic body based, because the issues are in the tissues. That trauma gets mm -hmm. stuck there. So yeah. that's just another important aspect. However, you're able to release that. Some people choose EMDR, some choose tapping, EFT, some mm -hmm. journaling, yoga. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just one important component as uh, that goes along with the whole recipe of what's needed yeah. to heal. You know, if you're dealing with childhood betrayal, something that happened, a parent did, it could even just simply be emotional betrayal by not being present, by not having the kind of parental figure that you needed in your life. You know, for a lot of people, you know, that parent may have passed, there, there was no opportunity to be able to address it or even express the feelings from that and get that out. How do you handle pain like that where you, you can't even talk to the person who did it or, you know, there, there's, it seems like there's no way to move through that. How do you, I guess that goes back to the forgiveness again, that you have to forgive for you, right? I'm going to say something that's going to sound so crazy, but I've seen this enough times. Uh, so it's worth sharing. Sometimes that pain with the person who passed is your tie to them. So mm -hmm. you're not as quick to heal it because then you feel you won't have that connection. Like for example, mm -hmm. I remember working with someone and she was a, she smoked cigarettes and she wanted to become this 2.0 version of herself. And I was like, does the, does the 2.0 version of you smoke cigarettes? Absolutely not. And then we start talking about her mom who passed and her mom was a smoker. Mm -hmm. So she, we nailed it. It was her, that was her connection to her mom. So I said, well, you know, okay, that's your connection, but would your mom want you smoking? Absolutely not. So what if, what if in honor of your mom, you stop smoking. She never picked up another cigarette. So it's mm. the, everything is about the meaning that we give it. Like, for example, you mentioned, you know, childhood, it could just be neglect of some kind. Imagine yeah. it could be something as simple as this. Let's say there's a 10 year old boy who has earth shattering news to share with his mom and he races into the kitchen and she's on the phone. So she shushes him Shh, sh, sh. right at that very moment. He could have made that mean I don't matter. Mm -hmm. Now your mind believes everything you tell it. So if that's what he made it mean, and then he thinks about it and he feels some, uh, he gets some feelings behind it and some emotion, we have between 60 and 80,000 thoughts a day. He has some version of, I don't matter. And mm -hmm. then if he builds, if that builds steam, think about the decisions he'd make as he grows older, the people he'd date, what he'd wear, who he'd, what kind of work he'd do based on something as simple mm -hmm. as his mom shooting him. It could yeah. be something as simple as that. And it then goes back to something as simple as our self-talk and what we tell ourselves about a situation. And we can talk ourselves into a very traumatic experience instead of being able to rationalize it. But then again, you're dealing with a child and a child is going to deal on an emotional level. And that's where it gets so tricky. Yeah. And that's why one of the most important things we do when someone's ready for it in that stage three-ish, we start really working on. Uh, unearthing those subconscious beliefs because we mm. have no idea what's lurking, but th that's what's driving our thoughts, behaviors, actions, habits. And if we are not even aware of it at all, we can't change what we're unaware of. But when right. we become aware of it, then we could change it for thoughts that are more forward moving, more healing. I mean, I even ask people, even without doing an activity like that, if you spoke to your friends the way you spoke to yourself, you wouldn't have a friend in the world. It's true. Right? 
Yeah. yeah. And that's what, and that's what we do. But that's another beautiful part of this healing because mm. it is so intentional that we, when we're moving into that stage four, we take a look at that too, how we're speaking to ourselves. Like per me, perfect example. I was so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I get lost wherever I go. It's just what happens. I know it's going to happen. I leave extra time. So, and I would be oh, so harsh and critical and berating myself. And then yeah. after the betrayal, I was like, I just don't want to do that anymore. Just mm. one of those things. So now I'm still getting lost wherever I go, but instead it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just a cute lost woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Everyone has to go along with it too. The whole family. Oh, you're lost with your mom. That's just absolutely adorable. But it's things like that. You get to look at all of it. And if it doesn't serve, let it go. And if it does, uh, include it. I love that. I love Well, yes. I mean, it's just the way of reframing it and how we have to think about things. And, and oftentimes that conversation does start in our own heads. So mm -hmm. I, I want to learn more about your institute. It is the Post-Betrayal Transformation Institute. How did you start it? When did you start it? And how does it work? Who do you serve? Uh, thank you. So it's the mm -hmm. PBT, Post-Betrayal Transformation Institute. What happened was after the five stages showed up. It's like, how in the world do I keep that to myself? So I put it into a program and it blew up and then mm -hmm. everyone wanted to work with me. And I was like, uh Oh, what do I do? So I right. created our certification program so everybody can get certified and get trained in the five stages. And then it hit me one day and I said, wait a second, I did the research. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. What would happen if I put everything that works under one roof. That's the PBT Institute. So we have coaches, mm. certified coaches that from all over the world, Kenya, Dubai, the UK, the US, oh, they wow. teach daily classes. We have our signature program, which literally moves people through the stages. We have the right type of support that lifts and inspires, not holds us back. We have mm -hmm. master classes from experts you can't get sessions with. They just want to support the community. So, and we have a way to self-assess what what stage you're in. So let's say you're in stage three, you go to stage three, everything's numbered. You go to stage three classes, see our stage three coaches, do our stage three stuff to get to stage four. You do the stage four stuff to get to stage five. So Very our cool. coaches are all certified in the five stages, but they're also bringing in 10, 20, 30 plus years of expertise in mm. everything that can help us heal from betrayal. So divorce, reconciliation, self-growth, right. chronic pain, mindset, you name it, we have it. Wow. And this is all done online? Totally online. Totally online. And mm. our members come in and our most popular is our three-month program uh, for the betrayed. And they they come in typically in, sta in stages two or three, and they mm -hmm. move through the stages. And, and what's so interesting with our uh, rebuild program for the betrayer, very yeah. often we'll have uh, the one partner who's the betrayer enter into that program and the betrayed enters in to their program. And I see the betrayers on a group call. It's so interesting. There was this one, it was a husband betrayed his wife and he's asking me and I'm giving them the playbook, what to say, what to do, what to never say, what to never do. Mm -hmm. And he was writing notes feverishly. And then I go on a group call with the betrayed and she speaks up and says, oh my gosh, he's like the guy I met in college. He's oh. totally different. And I'm like mm. silently, you know, high-fiving him because they put the work in and they truly, yeah. truly change. It's beautiful to watch. Oh, you're seeing some great healing. How amazing. Where do people find the Institute? What's your website? Oh, everything. Thank you. Everything is at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, the pbtinstitute.com the pbtinstitute.com. Also tell everybody about the two books, international bestsellers, Missy. <laughs> uh, have a bunch of books. Yes, yeah, seven actually, but the ones most relevant to what we're talking about would be Trust Again. That has okay. the five stages in it. And okay. then I found everyone was getting stuck in stage three. So Trust mm -hmm. Again has the five stages from hardened to healed is just for stage three. Ah, see, I knew stage three needed a book. I, I felt it. Mm -hmm. I felt it, Debbie. <laughs> its own book because it's just, you've been through the worst of it already. You owe it right. to yourself to move through the stages. Yes. And you have a podcast as well from betrayal to breakthrough and people can listen to that anywhere you listen to podcasts. Anywhere you listen to podcasts. Oh, so impressive. And you know what? Can I just say, so this podcast is over 50 and flourishing and you 
are totally flourishing because you at age 50, I understand, went and got your PhD, which just goes to show that anything amazing can happen in midlife. I, I believe it is such an opportunity for a restart, for intent, for purpose and passion. And I just, I love seeing women like you who are just on fire and believing and encouraging and doing what it is that you believe in. It's awesome. Thank you so much. And, and, you know, it's so interesting you say that because yes, I went back at 50 and I'll never forget. It was time for graduation. And a guy mm. emails me and he said, Oh, I'm going to be at graduation with you. He was in my same cohort. And I'm like, Oh, great. And he said, um, just remind me of, of who you are. I'm 78. <laughs> I'm like 78. The age. Getting a PhD. So, oh. I mean, just to meet him. Uh, yes. at the ceremony was just beautiful. So it's never, it's never too late. Never the too late. Yes. Anyway, might as well get a PhD or whatever it is you're interested in, um, you know, by the time you get there. I love it. Best words of encouragement and congratulations. You are shaping lives, you are changing lives, and you are helping people get through some really, really dark times. And I'm so grateful to have this conversation with you today, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. What an incredible conversation with Dr. Debbie Silber. Boy, I learned a lot and received and processed so much, and I hope you did too. Really love having guests like this, and I know you've got ideas and a list for me, so please, if you are watching on YouTube in the comment section below, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on today's podcast and any ideas about who you'd love to see on Over 50 and Flourishing. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast, share me with those you know and love, and I ask that you do the same if you listen on Apple or Spotify. Um, Please share me, rate, review, subscribe, share. It's how we grow over 50 and flourishing. It's how we loop in so many more women to this conversation and have them be a part of it. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you next week.